Welcome back, everyone, to <laughs> Insomnia Two Summer Championship 2. I'm Noxious with me, Lothar and Sotl back on the casting bench. So we're onwards to the last match we will be casting today. There are seven rounds, but some of them will be played off stream after this one is over. We're, we're running a little bit late, really. We've a, had, little bit, uh, a little bit. A little bit late. So because of that, and because we want to be fresh and uh, rested <laughs> for tomorrow's stream, we'll try to get some sleep in the meantime. Yeah. But tomorrow, yes. A lot of stuff to do. Yeah. Like We've we have the group stage, there will be 16 players, double elimination group stage, so GSL basically, and uh, that will take the whole day. And hopefully, there will be no downtimes. I mean, with Swiss, and I'm sure that our viewers are aware, OB will be aware in a few seconds, I will tell them, yeah. making a Swiss tournament is actually really difficult to broadcast. Right. Because every player starts at the same time, and in theory, should be finishing at the same time. Right. But some people play free control decks, some people play free aggro decks, and they're not matching against each other, so then you have one pair that is playing for like two hours, and everyone else is just waiting for them to finish. Right. So for, for the viewer experience, it's not the best one, but for the players, that's the best experience of what you can get. Uh, yeah, competitively, right? Yeah. It is the, the, the tournament format, I think, that will yield some of the best results you'll get. Barring round robin, which is even uh, even slower. So it's a bit, it's a good compromise. Um, so we've got two players who are at 4-0 right now. We've got 6-0 versus Ignite. So from what I hear, Ignite's gone on a crazy win streak with his uh, Shaman. Right, yeah. 11-0. Yeah, I, I spoke I to him just before this. He is 11-0 with Face Shaman in this tournament so far, which is uh, pretty insane. It's one of the things that Last Hero Standing opens up as a format, is if you're really good with one deck, or one deck is just really well positioned in the meta, you can get big sweeps. But as you can see on the screen right now, Ignite and 6-0, not the only people who are 4-0. Lots of big names in here as well. Super JJ, uh, your boy Ty Slothar, as well as uh, Modern Leper and Ness. <laughs> your boy. <laughs> your boy, your boy Ty. As well as uh, Two Beers and Ness as well. So a good mix of kind of uh, underground players who we all know are pretty solid, but and the, the big names as well, like Tyson Super JJ. I I'm just waiting for like Two Beers, Single Mold, and other players to be, you know, <laughs> popping out. We, we, need, we need more of that, really. Like, he's going to make a team called, I guess, <laughs> Brewery Inc. And it's going to be tavern-based, and uh, it's going to be just that. Stupid yeah. names. Okay. But it, yeah, we'll have a lot of known players in the top 20 right now. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. Uh, but, but, but still a lot of ahead of us when it comes to the next round. There will be still a lot of shifting made between those top 16 players. And in all the top 16, it will be cut off, and, and then they will advance to day two, which was the group stage. Yeah, it's also very important, I think, that they acquire very, very good uh, tiebreaker scores. So because we'll be casting this match as the last one broadcasted, tomorrow we'll get the, uh, you know, the given standings uh, at the end of the day. And that will mean that the 16 players that go there will be basically some of the top ones. And it's encouraging to see that the names that we see there are not just flukes, right? Like, we know those names. Right. We've seen them before. Yeah. They've been competing for a while. Uh, most of them either, you know, not very recognized, like Ness. I want to say Ness is one of those guys who's been performing pretty well but right. tournament results-wise, it's just not quite uh, quite there. Right, particularly at previous Insomnia. Right. Uh, he's done well, he has top 16, top 8s in this tournament in the past. It's grown up now to a much bigger size where he's having to hold his own against a pool of Europe's best. But you know, he's doing so. He's one of the guys in charge of this bracket right now at 4 and 0. So hats yep. off to him. So we'll move on to the game uh, between Tixo and his opponent, Ignite. So I want to see what Tixo brings, though, this time. because. I've seen him play a few events recently, and he did get. Uh, he, he tends to play more of the aggressive lineups. Right. Uh, and dictate aggression more so than anything else. Yeah. And he is prone to tilt. He is. And he is. That can be, you know, used against him. And it was actually used a lot against him. A lot of against him when I was talking with previous. Uh, with his previous enemies, I would say. Enemies. In previous tournaments that people deliberately rope him, an example, just to make him tilt. Yep. So he makes wrong decisions. Before the, the kill. Yeah, the, oh, the, the obvious hero like power that. kill, and they just yeah, just stuff like that is like a, a psychological advantage that you can you know use. Yeah, to your own good. It, Ignite right now, just looking at six, will be like, "Are you scared? Are you scared?" Because <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to mind game. Saiyajin. <laughs> right, but just, just looking at the lineups here, just to go over them quickly: Warlock, Druid, and Warrior from Six. Yeah. So I would expect that to be a pretty aggressive lineup. The Warrior is probably Patron, knowing Six O, which. While stopping short of an aggro deck is a very initiative-based deck now with the extra minions that you put in there. And then we see that this is Zoo, and I don't think there's uh, too much doubt about what the Druid deck is. So yeah. it's a very, very aggressive lineup from 6 yeah. I want to see, though, whether or not that Druid is more on the aggro side, you know, Fel Reaver style. Uh, I know that Ignite's deck is of the uh, very heavy aggro variant, so he's got Fel Reaver 
characters in there, from what I know. Oh, oh really? It's even got the peculiar, if I'm not mistaken, King Mukla in there, alongside mounted raptors wow. on three drops. So his his list is very aggressive. Uh, but since he's been, you know, basically steamrolling everyone as shaman, yeah, I has, can't imagine we've seen any of that. Yeah, deck he just yet. hasn't had to play anything <laughs> right. else. It's just, oh, three I mean, over shaman, three over shaman. He was playing against my friend on uh, last in the last round, and he won with the shaman three zero against him. Uh, sorry, three yes, three zero, three zero against him. Uh, but the first game was on the brink of either of them winning. And the only chance for Ignite to win the match was actually running six on a crackle. Because oh, otherwise he would have been dead All next right. turn I and he rolled the six. I have figured out how Ignite is uh, is 11, 11 and zero. <laughs> with a hand like this, <laughs> look at this hand. Finley yeah. into Hunter, into Totem Golem, into Flame Juggler. And it's not? not even the Flame Juggler, it's the Doom Hammer on turn yep. five. Yep. That's like the dream come true for yeah. every Shaman draw. And this prevents the Warlock from life tapping as well. And not only does he get to play the Shaman, but he also gets a good matchup right. uh, in a case like this with an opener like this one. And the Vangelis in the background music. Why not? Damn. I don't know if you hear that. So I, I do a little bit, but not, not quite enough. I, I, I'm just asking the viewers, because if oh. they don't hear it, then I'm you know, sounding like I don't horror. think they hear so. it, Volkar. <laughs> This is a okay. really interesting turn for Ignite, though. And yeah, he goes ahead with the Flame Juggler, whiffs on the 50-50 there, but the natural curve there suggests going Totem Golem into Flame Juggler, but this leaves him with the three mana open next turn mm -hmm. with Totem Golem and Lightning Bolt, and that gets all of his overload out of the way yeah. and pushes it onto turn four, so that then his turn five is free to jam the, the Doom Hammer. So, so 6-0 here like playing a very aggressive Warlock deck, Lepernome being in the list. Very German. But very German of him? Yeah, very German. Okay. But, uh, Awesome. What I want to say is that um, it's kind of um, interesting that in this matchup you usually go for the value trades mm. in the beginning of the game, right? Because it's, yeah. it, you are you are aware that the shaman most likely has no type of comeback cards like you know AOE effects, right? So if you even if you have a minion that has one HP, it most likely has to be killed with more than one damage. So the value trades are important in the beginning of the game, like turn one to three, when you can establish your board position and then start racing the shaman, right? If that's, of course, gonna happen. But with the two flame jugglers, which are the combat mechanism, a small combat mechanism for a shaman, uh, Ignite can turn this around. Yeah, it's a good point because, and what's interesting too is that there's so many of them that have one health. If there were, say, only one minion, then it's a 50-50, but in the case where there's three of them on the board, 75% chance to just get a kill. Yep. And it's slightly awkward. I mean, I totally understand playing the Flame Juggler there because there was three insane targets of two ones to hit with it, but now he's kind of obligated to play a Overload card on his yes. turn four right now, and that really interrupts the Doom Hammer, whereas I explained the turn before, he had the chance to just jam all his Overload on the previous turn. This turn, he could have just played Flame Juggler to, um, to then free up all his mana next turn, and he would have had the Doom Hammer. And now with that Rock Biter drawn, He's going to want to get that Doom Hammer rolling as quickly as possible, but forced to play the Totem Golem here and lock himself out of the Doom Hammer play next turn. Yeah, and the implosion comes out. If this rolls a four, this could be a really big turn for 6 0. Free. Not a bad. Not a bad one, right? Uh, it does keep the M Gang boss alive at the end of it, and you do get the extra imp anyway. Yeah, you have the four in. Maybe. You're good to go. <laughs> All right, I mean, Abusive Sergeant's not terrible here. It's something to fit his mana curve here with the hero power. Starts pushing damage, and yeah, with when your hand is Doom Hammer, Rock Bite, a weapon, uh, Lightning Bolt, I think it's pretty easy to recognize the time for trading is over. And the only thing that can be changed here is a Defend of Argus drop. Yeah. Right? That's the only thing that can bury Ignite under the pressure uh, from, from Xixo's side. But in this situation, when there's no Defend of Argus, the Doom Hammer with the Rock Biter is just a. It's a clock. You, know. you, you almost can't race it. I, I think it's a big Ben. A big Ben. Good lord. <laughs> 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 no way, you didn't go there. Oh, fitting that we're in the UK, isn't it? He has to rock by this immediately. Yeah, then this is perfect. This is what gives you some insurance against the Defender of Argus to jam this rock by for 10 damage straight away. Yeah. Because now if the Defender of Argus comes down, you have a lot of draws that are still lethal with that Lightning Bolt and the Hero Power. You have four draws that can finish the game even without the hero power because you have two lava bursts right. and two crackers that can roll high yep. and you can just finish the game even if there will be a defend of august draw so yeah
That's most likely. Ooh, a tap! Ooh. No choice, no but, the choice tap but, here, but the tap in that game. Exactly. Sixer right. recognizes the end of the game, the Hunter Hero Power, and Doomhammer is just too much. 12 0 for that Shaman so far in the event. We'll see if it's able to get more wins. I mean, this Warlock is out. Uh, being that this is last year's standing and not Conquest, the Shaman will be played as often as Ignite can win with it. Yeah, I think it's one of the decks, honestly, that uh, has the best chance for 6 0 against it. The Druid now can just get swept out if it doesn't get that super fast start that we've seen from it in a couple of games right. admittedly in this mm -hmm. tournament. Patron has a solid chance as well, but again, hey. reliant on a pretty decent start or else they can just get swept out of the game as well because they don't have as much stability in the deck as a control warrior. Does. Well, you just need the weapons and the armor skills, right? Yeah, easy. <laughs> yeah. Easy life, you just do that. Yeah. Well, Ignite's still off to a decent curve at the beginning of the game, but again, this whirlwind effect that uh, Patron is backing, a lot of them, by the way, uh, really deal with the one health minions from the Shaman pretty easily in the early game. You just but have to make sure that you pick up a weapon. How many minions are ha uh, are with the one HP? Lependomes and Sir Sir Finley? Hi. Okay. Well, that's a great draw, actually, for Xyz. It, so. it genuinely I is. am I mean, loving this card, yeah. But right. he needs to get Priest Hero Power now. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it's not so, like, people get a bit scared when they're playing Finley in, in, uh, in Patron Warrior against really aggressive decks. They want to have that armor power, but the point is you just played a 1-3 on turn one, and Which against an aggro deck, that's so good to have. It, it, actually, it will account for, like, 4 HP at least, right. so 2 hero right. powers when yep. you think about it, right? So if you get another hero power that can be an example, let's say, even a mage yep. hero power, then you can still kind of tr uh, transfer that damage into your own heal, right? Yep. Because you will destroy a creature. Well, but now we can see Paladin, horrible. Druid, <laughs> okay -ish. Yep. Priest, okay -ish. I would right. say I would say those are good picks. But yeah. now you have to think, do you need do I need the additional damage from the hero power? Because it's like a it, it, it doesn't fit the strategy of what you want to do in this matchup with the one attack, most likely. So I wouldn't be surprised to just to, to pick the, the uh, priest hero power, right? But the druid, I don't know, it's not bad. Yeah, druid makes sense too, and uh, you can see here the power of an early 1-3 against the aggro deck. Ignite, no no uh, flame jugglers, no totem golems in hand, just stuck with all of those 2-1 minions that are just going to get traded out really effectively on the board here. So he's uh, trying to find some creative way to do this. He knows if he does coin out 2-1 drops here, then the play of trade and then hero power down the other one is just perfectly reasonable for the warrior player. He just has to uh, decide whether those Lepanomes are ever going to do more than those the two damage. Right, their, that's their pretty much right. what I'm thinking. Like, if he can get Xixo to just skip turn two, yeah. uh, like no armor smith being played, right, uh, and simply has to end up using his hero power to, to deal with the second Lepanome, then that might slow him down enough that you can still get on the board afterwards if you pick up, say, a two drop. But right now it's not looking very, uh, very good for Ignite. He's going to slow down. Choose the slower option. Sure. So this opens up the option now. Slam is probably a little bit ambitious for a Lepanome, I think. Six O is gonna. Uh, <laughs> I don't dislike it because it saves your health a little bit. It does bit, save your health, yeah. And there's there's a thing with Rogue as well, where against like Face Hunter, you'll often shiver Lepanome even if you right. have the dagger equipped just to save the damage. But you yeah, I think Slam is too much of a useful card here to throw away. Please enlighten me. Why would you not use Finley as a trade here? Uh, I mean. So if I'm 6-0 in that position and my opponent just offers up a 2-1 onto the board, I would have expected that Flame Juggler was in his hand and that was something he, he would have had to it, set yeah. up. I mean, it wasn't, and that was the top deck, but I think if I'm sat in 6-0's chair, why would you sacrifice a 2-1 into, into a 1-3 like that? And I imagine the only solution you come to as 6-0 is he wants to Flame Juggle me next time. Okay. Good point. I mean... I'm just, you know, following my own train of thought about the minions with one HP. Right, right, right. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, trading, like, getting a two for one out of that uh, Finley, if you can, is probably worth it. Now, that Crackle could roll low. Oh, it does! Oh, it does. And Ignite on the wrong side of RNG this time. Uh, sometimes that Crackle will not roll the six. And it happens. Now he lost. Yeah, you I can would just say end that around sentence there. You, now can, he lost. <laughs> you just finish stop. it. Yeah. I, I just wanted to, to like, count how much damage. It's at least four damage. Right. Lost with that single roll. Right. But yeah, the, the really big deal is that the Despite is there to sweep Ignite's board and he doesn't have any pressure left. So you, you really could have just cut that sentence short. That that roll <laughs> did more or less lose the game for, for Ignite right there. Yeah. And just goes to show like how inconsistent Shaman can be at times. Yeah. Um, when they're rolling, not only with their hero power, right? Uh, yeah. But when you've got effects like Crackle, 
is giving you that very high chance. So that's why you have so many sweeps, I want to say. Some people are on the positive end of that variance in a given tournament, and then you have the other people rolling the absolute worst end of the Shaman cards uh, and totems. So I mean, that's a general rule of thumb, thumb for aggro decks. Right. Yep. It, it tends if to be you just game. draw and just use steam, steam, uh, steam roll people that are no matter what your decks and just get free wins, basically, right? But sometimes you're on the other end of the stick and you're like sitting there with those awkward cards that are not doing anything, and your opponent's just, you know, just getting to you with those big minions. And One at a time, yeah. And There's nothing you can do. Right. Uh, this is pretty much the optimal outcome for six. So picks up card draw on top of this. He has to clean up the entire board. It's interesting because he could have gone with a with slam, slam onto right? the, yeah, the wolf exactly. there, which would have drawn one card instead of three, sure. But it leaves his frothing berserker like so much better position to. But I guess he's, he's just, just going to go ahead and execute it instead, which is totally fine. Like execute doesn't really have targets against this deck anyway. It's pretty much totem golem is the best thing to execute a lot of the time. So I think using the execute there is totally fine. Another juggler, but this time around not as useful as it was uh, in the past game. So this looks pretty rough for Ignite. I can't really see a world in which he's able to stabilize off of this. There's no real amount of card draw, aside from ancestral knowledge, that's going to get him out of this mess. I mean, he needs a Doomhammer and a double roll. And he just leaves. Well, okay. that's kind of, I don't know. A skip and seed is a bit early, but I would I, I, say that a single Doomhammer and a rock batter could have still turned this around. Sure. I think uh, like he's just looking at his opponent's hand there, figuring there was some defensive options based on how many cards was drawn. There was, there there was wasn't. Sure. And with uh, without the warrior hero power as well, like, you may have a point. A, a clutch Doomhammer draw could have put that all together. But Ignite is going to give up the massive face shaman yeah. win streak and going to have to move on and rely on some of his other decks here. But I'm, I'm really interested to see that, uh, that Druid deck you were talking about, Nox. It, it looks like on paper it looked really cool. Uh, it played well from what I saw as well. So I hope I get to see the unleash of the aggression. It's going to be Control Warrior, I believe, from Ignite versus yeah, 6 looks like so. I think uh, that's going to be a bit rough for 6 -0. If uh, Ref Double Revenge and Double Brawl, I'm guessing, yep. yeah. in this type of build, which basically puts a lot of pressure on the patron to be super aggressive as soon as possible, because otherwise there will be a revenge for free damage or just a brawl and a weapon swing and uh, yeah. That's it. Right. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah, I mean, one of the ways you can win this matchup is just push in as early as possible with that kind of draw that Sixo has right now, the Inner Rage and the Patron, if you can pick up Death Spite or Whirlwind to go with it. But unfortunately, you do that because it's unlikely your opponent will have drawn a brawl. It becomes that's more right. likely as time goes right. on, but Ignite has a brawl in his opening hand right now, and I think against Confirmed Patron, that is a card that you can afford to keep as a Control Warrior. Yeah. No, having that information is really crucial for Ignite. And again, if it comes down to it and the Control Warrior ends up winning, um, Chixel's gonna have to queue up his own Druid into it, which is not too bad, I guess. Right. Yeah, perfectly reasonable Druid, one of the best decks against this new form of uh, Super Removal Warrior. Ignite does go ahead and just hold on to the Brawl. Uh, so he'll be looking for a weapon to go with this to control some of the early minions from the Patron Warrior. Picks up two Fiery War Axes. All right. One's not enough. Yep. Dual wield, boys. Let's go. They better add that one day. I better see my garage dual wield at some point. I still miss, miss uh, Mother Misery from World of Warcraft CG that had six arms. I didn't know that was a thing, but that looks great. And and <laughs> your, your deck was uh, consisting only of weapons. You could hold six wep weapons. <laughs> and, yeah, and you <laughs> that had is six so weapons. ridiculous. Yeah, I won oh, an original good Lord. that deck. No one else played it any anytime fun. anyway, because it was like so, you know focus on one one thing but it was so cool and i hope that harson will at some point have a hero that can be swing with, can be a, it will be able to swing with two weapons at the same time i hope so you know aspect of the tentacle lord in old gods expansion <laughs> gives you like eight arms and uh and you, ha you will have one weapon and seven shields. Sure. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> We're going to find out a lot right now about how Sixo intends to play this game. And yep, yep we are there going we go. all in with turn five patrons. Sounds uh, good so to I'd me. So I expect you Ignite have, to prioritize have. developing a weapon this turn so he's able to answer the patron board completely next turn. Just brawl it away, use the weapon to chop down the last patron. And uh, this is going to be a game that's going to get away from Sixo pretty quickly here, I'd say, if he does commit on the following turn. I mean, he still has the Whirlwind on the back end, so again, another top deck of, say, another Patron right. followed by some card draw might get him back in, but if this Brawl hits and there's no way for him to come back on the board afterwards, it's pretty much locked out. I agree with you both. It's like pretty straightforward game. The only chance to win for 6-0 is the 10-5 Patron, 
with combo wombo AoE effects and let's just do patrons. Yeah, and from 6-0's perspective, he will have seen his opponent keep only one card, so Brawl is for sure a card that will be kept in this matchup. So with only one card being kept, he knows it wasn't the Fiery War Axe that was played early if he was keeping track of, track of which card was which. So mm -hmm. he'll feel this is a pretty high percentage play to go for the patrons here, but he will pretty soon get the sad news that Brawl is coming down and that pre-equipped weapon, which again is important for Ignite, uh, that he managed to load that up, is able to chop down this last 3-3 three, three and completely nuke the board here. I will say one thing though, Ignite is getting, uh, you know, 19 health might not seem like it's too low, but there's no armor gain in, hell, like in hand right now, and the right. Corcoran coming his way is going to deal a substantial amount of damage. So he's gonna have to handle it probably with a slam, uh, and then finish it off with the AoE. Yeah, the we'll damage is already that. piling up a bit, yeah. Well, he we can also play oh, just the Beltra, right? And uh, just attack him, dude? Yeah, he can Shit. play Belcher, he can so many kill options. Slam, yeah. yeah. I just ripped the bash oh. as well. Why not? Yeah, Why actually. not? I had two good options, then I drew a third, even better one. Seems fine. So if I can guess, this is one of the last turns for Xixo. And knowing the player, yes. Yeah, knowing the player, and Ignite was actually, is, is very similar in that, in that behavior. He will just concede. Yeah. Even though there's a small chance he can still win, yeah. I would say that that the last game with Ignite playing the Shaman, he might have been able. He, he might have been able if he would have gone into a Doomhammer top deck, into a Ancestral Knowledge with Rockbiter and a Burst or a Double Rock. Something Rockbiter. ridiculous, yeah, but unlikely, it but it happened. Yeah. We we saw it on the Insomnia 56 when Radu could Picked have up the like Juggler Peddler. Turn. Juggler, Peddler right. into PO, yeah, into yeah, Doomguard, yeah. and it was just ridiculous. And one out of, I don't know, 200 or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. And he's still done that and won the game. I still think it's one of the, like, these two players have a tendency to just leave games that they think is are too unlikely to be won. Right. Um, we'll never know how many games were robbed from them. But that being said, I feel like Ooh. in a spot like this, it would be really hard for Sixo to justify sticking around. It is a difficult uh, situation to come Yeah, from. especially as just the health total of the warrior just right. climbs up and up and up. As long as it was hovering around that kind of 15 to 19 mark that you were talking Surely, about, yeah. you feel like you're only like a couple of you know, Corcoran hits, death fight hit, then draw the Grom at the right time, like it can be okay. But as the life gain starts to climb up back towards 30 right now, you're gonna feel like you're generally in trouble. Yeah. Dr. Boom's a good pick up though, so the BGH will find a target. <laughs> Very good pick up. Oh, oh well, look at just that. in case this match wasn't sewn up enough, Harrison Jones off the top. Denies. When you think about it, the Death Lord is an amazing card. Right. Against, against this deck, yes. It's it like, yes, I will get your patron during my turn on the board, a single patron, and just finish it off with a bash, shoot slap, attack with a weapon, or whatever else, and just finish off the game. So I wonder if 6 is going to stick around just to get, glean some information as to what this control war is running, because there, there have been a lot of lists kind of uh, floating around. You want to know if it's an Elise deck, uh, if it's running Death Lords, it's not everywhere. Right. You kind of want to have that information. So sticking around, maybe giving Ignite the opportunity to mess up and feed you that information. Yeah, there's a lot of possible twists you can play in Control Warrior now. You know, are they running Armorsmiths? Are they running Doomsayers? Right. There's all these kind of options. So. This is definitely a deck that you do want to scout out a little bit if he hasn't already got information from one of Ignite's previous uh, previous players. So he's going to stick around for a little bit here, but... Um... Patron top deck. Ooh. How about that? Well, that's a good one as well. Uh, so I imagine Ignite will probably sacrifice his 5-1 to the Hearthstone Gods here and play Harrison just to rip away this Death Spite because yep. he doesn't have a clean answer to a second huge patron board right now. So if Sixo was able to dump his entire hand and make a full board of patrons, that's one of the very few win conditions he'd have right now. He's thinking about it. He's definitely considering whether or not to, to lose this 5-1 yeah, here for tricky, the cost of the Death Spite. It's a tricky Spite. decision, yes. Right. I... I mean, I like Gorhal set up with a Grom lethal like on the next sure. turn. Yeah, I don't yeah, dislike right. that too much either. But I guess the value, right? And the and safety. I, yeah, and I, I loved safety. Ignite's like mouse movements and mannerisms there because you saw his entire thought process. He yeah, touched, you saw everything. Touched the Gorhal, <laughs> and then he went, "Okay, if I play Gorhal, then I have lethal with this and this, and touch Shield Slam and Grom, and then just Ignite's player cam. He just shrugs and then plays." Yeah, he's like, you know what? Whatever, that'll work anyway. <laughs> I, I, I can do complicated, you know, fluffy and cute things, but ultimately Harrison is the safe play. Right. Uh, and he's the one that's gonna seal the game, and he's got to get that deck again. And Six is gonna have to get the Druid up against the Control Warrior, which is which supposed is not to be bad. right. Yeah. Supposed to be somewhat favored. And the, the Death Lords are really problematic for the Warrior, actually. Yes. Because yes. the Druid's Dex density suggests that the Death Lord drop will be most likely something around a four-four yeah. or a five-five. Yeah. 
and even if it's Engine of War, just a 5-5 five, five minion for 0 mana, it's still good. It's a 0 mana minion that is a 5-5 five, five, and you have to sacrifice it and execute. Right. Or a swing with a Death's by Death's Death's by it's durability really one, right? And it's a double weakness as well, right? Because not only do you know big mid rangey things get pulled from the Death Lord, but because they don't have those small aggro early minions, like that's what Death Lord's so effective at stopping. Right. Yeah, when exactly. you play Death Lord and they just immediately answer with piloted shredder, like that, you know, like <laughs> that doesn't really feel stopping good. anything, right? So. <laughs> yeah, agree, agree completely. Yeah. Like, Death Lord is amazing against an example paladins, right? Uh, which are not playing Keeper of Ultimates. Or equality? Good lord, that card. I thought my <laughs> Death Lord Priest was okay until I suddenly realized, wait, there's nothing I can do. This card is useless. I mean, I was just hoping that at some point I can play a mill rogue in a you competitive can. environment. But unfortunately now with Death Lord rotating out of the format, it's most likely impossible. We'll get something good one day. Blizzard will bless us with, uh, with their... They're good cards. Now, looks like the uh, the ramp from 6-0 giving him a good minion that, funny enough, Ignite simply can't answer right now. Uh, no execute in sight. The weapon's not enough on its own. He's gonna have to pick something up from the Acolyte. Yep, Ignite does offer up the greetings to that innovator Druid of the Claw. No answer in hand right now. Loving this. 6 is just gonna go straight ahead, jam that big game Hunter, and this is great recognition of the, the state of the meta. Normally, Control Warrior is a deck you wanted to have big game Hunter in hand with, because they played three or four massive targets for yeah. it. Now, sometimes it's down to just Grom with people's Control Warrior builds. Sometimes not even Dr. Boom is in the deck anymore. Oh, I'm gonna... It happens. It happens. Oh, it happens. Yeah. But that's like 1 to 10. Or it's 10%. It's better than the win rate that some people could expect to get, you know. <laughs> Without Dr. Boom? Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh. but uh, I love the B Big Game Hunter just drop on the on the board because, Perfect. as you said, it's a, it's a lot of pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three mana for four damage? Sure, I take that. It's a body. It's seven, it doubles the Savage Roar, right? Right. So, still cool. Look at that. Eight damage. Just straight to the dome. Uh, I mean, this you, is do you tempting, consider yourself far enough behind in this game to try and win a two out of five? Over a Belcher, yes. I'm not sure. Yes. But it, I, does, I, it does look dire, ball. yeah. The yeah, I actually love good. this. Yeah, and he won. I mean, this is this is perfect for him. This is, again, recognition of a situation where it's the ball is in your court to get the proper weight out of the situation. You can see the Acolyte was still green as soon as he cast it, which meant it won the Brawl. Yep. So yep. Excellent, excellent play from Ignite. I really like casting the Brawl there and just knowing that he had to get lucky in that situation. Yep. And there's a Death's Bite with the armor up to answer this Drake. So, again, very good curve on this armor up. Gets to play Belcher on 7 if you want. Dr. Boom. Probably better in many cases, but you know, for safety's purposes, you imagine if you would have lost the brawl and still a keeper even would have been on the brawl, right? right? And if that's additional two damage, would be already almost in the range of the combo, right? So a lot of problems would have been piling on, but fortunately for him, that's not the case. He won the brawl, and by the way, the newer viewers to Harson, newer player to Harson, are not aware that brawl was actually fixed, right? Because the first initial um, brawl animation was actually telling you which minion, which minion would, would yes. oh, yeah, it systematically tell you which minion would live. That's yeah, right. because it was going to the, to the brawl the last, as yeah. the last minion, right? It's kind of boring. <laughs> it was yeah. kind of boring. There was honestly. no excitement. So, I mean, this is basically double combo coming up the next few turns for 6 -0. He's got the Innervate, he's got the double Savage Roar with a swipe even to just to whittle down some of that armor. Double swipe! Double swipe. What on earth? My goodness. Uh, Ignite from his own side, though. Big Sixo, stuff, yeah. Sixo does not have all the time in the world to just set up a couple of turns lethal here. That's he right. He's getting slammed in the face by a 7-7, seven seven, and there's now 14, Where's your big game 14 up power on the board for the next turn, so he's going to feel under threat here. Do you play your own Dr. Boom as a counterplay here? I don't think so. Or do you have to play... Okay, I guess not. I, I mean, you have to make some plans to win the game next right. turn, right? So you count... You pl your opponent plays a death, death spite, right? So he has 12... 14 damage on board, yep. and not a death spite doesn't give him lethal, yep. right? So he would have to activate his bombs after the attack to get additional damage. So the option is death spite plus another weapon, or death spite plus whirlwind or revenge, right? We know that there's this exactly that that out right. in his hand, but I wouldn't be um, surprised if Xixo would actually go for the double swipes. He dies to the boom bots then though, right? Yeah, if he swipes face without playing minions, then that just is so high percentage to just give lethal to ignite. That's the problem right now. Yeah, but yeah. then you can kill um, the shields maiden. Oh, so you want to swipe face, swipe shield maiden? Yes. Okay, okay I can right. see that. 
Looks like he's gonna try to push for the biggest force of nature savage roar in the world. Whoa! <laughs> Innervate said, oh. and you said there are no more big game mounted right, targets. Yeah. Big country war. What that's a big game. Good lord. Okay, well that's interesting. Can't say I expected that one. Yeah, I am not a big fan of this card at all. I think Nefari. I think North Sea Kraken is a better card <laughs> than Nefari. <laughs> Shout out to Modern Leffa if you're listening right now. I think it's a good card, though. Von Leffa has made the argument right, and just listen to this for a second. North Sea Kraken is Nefarian that draws you Prep Abyss every time. And yeah, exactly. That's right? how I look like, at it. That's good, right? Come on. Yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> it's Innovate Eviscerate. Yeah, exactly. It's innovate Eviscerate, yes. Right. <laughs> it, innovate it. always sounds better than yeah. Prep. Than Prep, that's right. And well, uh, decent pickup. There are more armor gain if he wants to, to get it. He still has the chance to just go for lethal with Deathbite Revenge if he wants to right now. Is he coming for that? All he has to do is get one. one yeah, face, one. one and there's only one other target on the board. And, and that's that's it. It. that's oh. it. Nice. Two really key turns there. The Brawl turn and then that turn at the end where, sure, he relied on a random outcome to, de to decide what was going to happen, but they were timed perfectly and they were recognitions yeah. of the situation to really put himself in a good spot. Yeah, I mean, despite the fact that the Shaman ended up taking a win, it didn't steamroll Tixel the same way right. that it did other players. So even though it might have been responsible for him getting there, the 5-0 so far yep. uh, in the group stage, I feel like his other deck the, was probably properly as well. Yeah, absolutely. A very impressive performance from Ignite so far. 6-0, still in a very strong position in this tournament overall. 4-1 is a great record to have at this point. Still in a nice spot, but... Um, he, he doesn't want to lose any more matches, really, though, because as, as soon as you hit the 4-2 the uh, mark, the most you can do is get to 5-2, and then that's a bit awkward, given that unless your tiebreaker is really high, you might get pushed down. Right, well, he lost to Ignite. If Ignite right. goes, an example, 7-0, then yes. you have a good tiebreaker, exactly. because you lost one of your games to to a high uh, value, uh, yeah. value player, as, right? as a player that's like streaked out to 4-0 at the start, you're then essentially in the high elo part of the bracket, essentially, so... You're getting... The losses are not that devastating. Right, yeah. Your, your, your tiebreakers just naturally get better by playing a higher quality of opponent right. throughout the rest of the tournament. So one thing to note, too, is that um, at this point, I think Ignite is the highest record holder for now. We'll have the ranking set up for the, the entire other player roster. This is going to be the last match we cast today for the Swiss round. We have seven rounds. Two of them are going to be played off stream after this. Given that we're running a little bit late, we're going to get some sleep so we can come back tomorrow. It's going to be at 1 p.m. GMT, so make sure to tune in. We'll have the top 16 of today in the Swiss round. It's going to be the same format, so we'll have last hero standing. Double elimination, however, that time, given the Swiss is already over. So with four groups. Four groups, yep. yep. That, uh, that will be a pretty, it'll be a pretty stacked uh, group given that we already have some really big names in the, uh, the top 16 lining up for the Swiss. To put the, that into perspective, an example, most of the tournaments are starting from the point that we'll have tomorrow. Right, exactly. Right? With so 16 invites or... Qualified. Or like 32 people stacked into eight groups or something like yep. that, right? And uh, we'll be having that as the second stage of the tournament. And I think most of the players here are liking the fact that you have more variants, you have more games, you can just show your consistency, right? Absolutely. And you can show that you are really good with this deck, this deck, and because of its last hero standing, and you can just go 12-0 or 11-1 with just one deck, right? And that can happen, so. Yeah, just, just to be clear, the Swish portion of the tournament is not over yet. It's just due to the delays we had earlier. Right, exactly. time to broadcast it all. So you guys can still follow along if you're invested in who's coming out of this Swiss bracket. You can just go to the Battlefy page. Just go to battlefy.com. It'd be easy to find the Insomnia True Silver Championship. So if you want to follow through the rest of the Swiss, you can do that there. But unfortunately, due to the uh, internet issues that we had earlier yes, on, indeed. we do not have time to broadcast the remaining two rounds, but still plenty more Hearthstone action tomorrow. Yeah, Great we'll be giving reason. you the, uh, the updates on that. So that being said, guys, thanks for watching. Lothar, Sotol, thanks for the cast. I know Nimsh is already asleep in his bed. <laughs> sound asleep. No, no, he's just playing some mobile games. Sure, mobile yeah. games it is for Nimsh. So, yeah, on this note, guys, you guys uh, have a good night, and we'll see you tomorrow.